Welcome to Life, Learning in Florida's Environment, Science Shorts. Today, we're here at University of Florida IFAS Extension, Sarasota County, and I'm Dr. Katherine Clements, the Ecology and Natural Resources Educator. My friend, Miss Carol, is gonna join us in a moment, and she's gonna talk to you guys about insects. So super cool, I can't wait. Let's go find her. Hello, my name's Carol Wyatt Evans, and I'm a natural resource extension agent here at the University of Florida Extension Office in Sarasota. I'm here to talk to you today about bugs. The good thing about my job is I get to do things that I love, and I love bugs, and so I love talking about bugs, but especially I love talking about insects. So today we're gonna to talk about the phylum Arthropoda, the class Insecta but we'll talk about arthropods as a whole group first. So arthropods just means jointed appendage or jointed legs. So we have two models here and they are both in the phylum arthropoda, but a spider is not an insect. A spider is an arachnid and the Hercules beetle is an insect. It's actually in the, in the order Coleoptera, but we don't need to know that. So when we're looking at these arthropods, we notice that they both have jointed appendage, right? So if you look at here, arthropods have the jointed appendage. Beetle has this as well, but they both have what's called an exoskeleton. So when we're looking at these insects, their skeleton is actually on the outside of their body versus it being on the inside, like we have ours on the inside as vertebrates. So they both have jointed appendages, they both have exoskeleton, but the difference is that the insect has antennae, so spiders don't have antennae, insects have antennae, but they also have wings. Wings sets insects apart from all the other phylums. So when we look at this, this beetle, they have these hard outer wings, which is called the elytra, and then they have these inner wings, these are the flight wings, which actually fold up, and then the elytra comes down and protects those flight wings. They also have, I forgot to mention this, when you're looking at them, they have a circulatory system, a digestive system, and a reproductive system, just like us. So both of, or the phylum arthropoda all has those systems. So the thing about wings, I wanna spend a little time about wings. Wings make insects special because wings allow them to fly, right? And disperse and go to new areas. They also allow them to get away from predators very quickly, okay? But um, wings are only found in the adult stage of an insect. So when you're, looking, when you're looking for insects, you're gonna notice if it doesn't have wings, that means it's a baby or an immature stage. So we've talked about their body characteristics, right? Let's move on to how they reproduce, right? So we can put them in two different categories. So one is called incomplete metamorphosis. I know it's a big word. So you're gonna hear either incomplete or maybe gradual or simple metamorphosis. And what that is, something like a praying mantis has an incomplete metamorphosis. So incomplete has three stages of its life cycle. So it goes just from the adult stage, it lays eggs, right? So this is a big egg case. And then we have the nymphs. So these are the immatures. When they break out of the egg, they look just like the adult, right? So these are like little mini me's. So this is a baby praying mantis. So when it grows up, it's gonna look just like its, its parent, which it already does look just like its parent. The thing about incomplete metamorphosis is both the adults and the nymph or the baby stage both eat the same things. So they stay in the same environment and they actually compete, right? So they, they compete for the same food source. 
So that is incomplete metamorphosis. Now we move on to something called complete metamorphosis. Most of the insects have complete metamorphosis. And one of the most common ones that we know of is the butterfly. So in complete metamorphosis, they have four stages of development. So they go from the adult stage, they lay their eggs. So here are the eggs. And when they hatch out, they're larvae, right? And what do we call a larval stage of a butterfly? We call it a caterpillar, right? So what happens when it grows from this little tiny stage, this is with all insects, when they go from these tiny stages, even if it's an incomplete metamorphosis, when it goes from this tiny stage, it has to grow in order to become an adult. But we know that they have their skeletons on the outside, an exoskeleton, so they have to go through a thing called a molt. So they have to basically break out of their, their skeleton in order to grow. So they will grow through maybe three or four molt stages before they can become an adult. And it's the same with the caterpillar. The caterpillar will also shed its skin, but it has, remember, it has four life stages. Complete metamorphosis has four life stages. And its fourth stage is gonna be the pupil stage. We know this is a chrysalis, right? But they're also called cocoons if it's a moth. So what happens is this, this um, caterpillar goes into this kind of sleep mode. And as it's changing in there, and then when it breaks out of that, cat that chrysalis, it's going to be a butterfly. So that's one of the complete metamorphoses. Mosquitoes also have complete metamorphosis, right? Here's their pupil stage. That's called the wiggler stage. Our, our beetles have complete metamorphosis. This stage, right, the, the larval stage is called a grub. And then we know our lady beetles, right? So these are our ladybugs. So they have the egg, they have the, the, the larval stage, and then the pupil stage, and back to the adult. So that's our complete metamorphosis. So we've talked about the insect's life cycle. We've talked about what makes them an arthropod and what makes them an insect, right? Because they have wings. But now we want to look at how do we actually see insects and how do we observe insects? So to start with, there's a thing called a hand lens. Now hand lens can come in all kinds of sizes. They can be really inexpensive, like this is like a dollar or a, a magnifying glass if you have one at home, or you can buy this at the dollar store, or you can get a one that's a little bit more expensive. But they're basically all just magnifying glasses so that you can see small things that are on, small insects that are on the, um, like on the plant leaves. Now you have to remember insects are small and they usually are on the back side of leaves. But just to show you what the magnification looks like, how it makes it look bigger, is so now you can see the inside of that flower. And so when you're looking for insects, you're going to want to look on the back side of the leaf and you can look at them this way and you can see that there are just hundreds of insects that you would have never known were there because they were so small. So these are really good things to have when you want to go insect, um, looking for insects. Our next thing is a sweep net. Now, most of us think of insect collecting and collecting butterflies and moths and bees, but there are even really small insects that fly. So the sweep net comes in handy for collecting butterflies. So you can, if you see a butterfly, you sweep, sweep, swoosh, and you try to capture it in the end, or you can do the sweep on the top of bushes and do the flip and then see if you capture some small things that you would have never seen in the first place. But you have to be careful with this because if you capture something that stings or bites like a wasp or a bee, your net is thin and so they can actually sting you through the net. So you just have to be really careful. So our next thing is called a 
pitfall trap. Now we know that there are insects on the back of, of leaves, so small things that stay, stay stationary, stay in one spot. We have things that fly, and that's what we use the sweep net for. But we have a pitfall trap, which is just a little cup and a cut off um, cone. And you bury these in the ground because there's a lot of things called detritivores. So those are things that live in the ground or on the top of the mulch that eat um, organic matter. They're like little composters. So the pitfall trap is something that you bury in the ground and then the insects walk along and fall into that, that pit trap. And our last thing is called a beet sheet. Now this is one of my favorite things because you can capture all kinds of things and observe all kinds of things with a beet sheet. Now I bought this beet sheet, but you know, I have used the a blanket. I have used a, a um, sheet from my bed. So you can use anything as a beet sheet. You just want to make sure it's light colored. And how you use a beet sheet is that you put it underneath a bush and you literally beat the bush. So you would take and you would beat the bush and then you see all the things that fell off that bush and fell onto your beet sheet. And like here, I think I have a bunch of ants. Oh, and I have a lady beetle, look at that. So when you do a beet sheet, you see how many insects are actually on that bush. So let's move on to our pitfall traps and see if we caught anything. So here we are at our pitfall trap. So we buried this earlier today. And the pitfall trap, you want to bury it so that the top of the rim is even with the ground. So as insects walk along, they, they fall into the pit and they can't come back out. So, you know, I think I see something there. Oh gosh, look at that. We caught a grasshopper. But really, we know this is just a model, right? But when you do pitfall traps, you usually capture things like beetles. So it's good to put pitfall traps out at night and then check them in the morning to see what you, what you caught in your trap. So to sum this up, there are types of containers. You can have household containers, anything that you can see through. Um, but you can have containers so that you can observe the insect, right? So you can look at the, capture the insect, put it in your container, count its leg, look at its body parts, look at its wing type, right? Both of these, both of these, oh, sorry about that. Both of these are beetles, so they have elytra, that hard outer wing. But once you look at them, you've done your observations on your insects, then you're wanting to set them free. You want to let them go. So with that, thank you for joining me and talking about insects with me and learning about insects. I hope you enjoy your insect observation. Thank you, Miss Carol, for teaching us all about class arthropoda, which are the arthropods. And remember, arthropods have jointed legs, they have an exoskeleton, and bilateral symmetry, just like us humans. And we learned about class Insecta and what makes insects so unique among the arthropods is that they have wings. And then Miss Carol told us all about incomplete metamorphosis, which is when an insect has three parts to their life cycle, three stages, the adult that lays the eggs and then the nymph, which looks just like a miniature form of the adult. That's incomplete metamorphosis. And then the insects like butterflies and beetles, they go through what's called complete metamorphosis, which has four stages to their life cycle. They go from adult that lays eggs to a larva, which looks different from the adult. And then the larva will make either a cocoon or a pupa and change into that beautiful adult version. So thank you for being with us today and learning about insects. Insects are also really important to food production because many of them are our pollinators. So if you wanna learn more about pollination, watch our life science short. 
flower power in the process of pollination. We'll see you at our next episode. Bye-bye.